Good day, mate. You want to go take a trip down to Australia and go check out Lone Pine Sanctuary? Well, let's go. So where is Lone Pine Animal Sanctuary? Well, it's in Brisbane, Australia. Where is Australia? Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere, and Brisbane is on the Eastern Coastline. All right, let's go ahead and enter. Let's look around and see what animals there are. Let's take a look at the map. The map shows us where all the different animals are, plus things like the restrooms and the food and the gift shops. So I know everyone loves gift shops. So what do you see on this map? They have a lot of Australian animals, which of course, they're going to have because they are in Australia. All right, let's go check out some animals. Lone Pine is known for their koalas, and their koalas are so cute. There are a lot of different things about koalas. Now, some people think that they might be bears, but that is wrong. They are actually marsupials. They have a pouch just like kangaroos and keep their babies safe and protected in that pouch. Crikey, look at all those koalas. That's what they call a koala train. Now, one of the important things about koalas is that they live up in the trees almost all the time. So they have an arboreal lifestyle. And those claws, they have very sharp claws with thick pads for cushioning. Those claws help them climb up the trees. Now, koalas are native to Australia. And they can only be found on the eastern portions of Australia. They are nocturnal animals, which means that they mainly are active at night. Koalas live in eucalyptic forest and eat gum leaves, which are usually toxic to other animals, but koalas handle it just fine. Koalas don't drink a whole lot of water. They get most of their moisture from these eucalyptus leaves. Shh! Koalas love to sleep getting about 18 hours a day. Now, a baby koala is called a joey, and it lives in its mother's pouch for six months and then remains with her for another six months, usually riding on her back. When a joey is born, it is only two centimeters long. So think about the size of a jelly bean. That's pretty small. And koalas can live for 10 to 15 years. One of the things about Lone Pine is that they have a huge free roaming kangaroo area. You can go in and hang out with these kangaroos. Now check out this kangaroo over here. It really wants to get into mom's pouch, even though it might be a little bit too big. Kangaroos are marsupial animals that are found in Australia as well as in New Guinea. Remember, marsupial animals have pouches where their babies kind of hang out until they're ready for the real world. There are four different kinds of kangaroo species. Kangaroos can hop around quickly on two legs or walk around slowly on all four. A group of kangaroos is called a mob or a troop or a court. The red kangaroo is the largest marsupial in the world. Kangaroos usually live around six years old in the wild. 
those roads sure are tough on kangaroos. Ah, one of my favorite animals, Tasmanian devils. Now, Tasmanian devils are the world's largest carnivorous marsupial. We love their meat, but they don't go out and hunt live animals. They are mainly scavengers, feeding on whatever meat they can find. These Tazzy devils can eat about 10% of their body weight a day. If they find something in the wild, they will often eat until they are completely full because they don't know when they're going to have a next meal. Tazzy devils do strange yawns that look quite fierce, but actually usually mean they are stressed or scared. They make a lot of strange sounds, including coughs, growls, snorts, sniffs, screeches, and even sneezes, usually to scare off other animals to avoid fights. Now, they don't attack humans, even though they look really scary. Now, Tazzies are one of the craziest sounding animals I have ever heard. It is something that you will always remember, especially if you hear it in person. This looks like something that you've seen before, but really, it's not. These are dingoes. Dingoes are actually wild dogs. They are not domesticated like the dogs that we have. Dingoes live all over Australia except for Tasmania. Now, a lot of farmers don't like dingoes because they tend to eat their livestock. So they've erected a long fence across half of Australia trying to keep these dingoes out. Now check out these baby dingoes. Aren't they cute? Dingoes can have between three and five babies at a time. Now these live in packs between five to 13 animals per pack. And they often hunt kind of together to bring down larger prey. Dingoes are super cool. A cool thing about Australia is that it has animals that no other place has. One of these animals is called an echidna. I call it an enchilada. An echidna is sometimes called a spiny anteater. Although it resembles a porcupine or a hedgehog, if you look closer, it looks really unusual. Echidnas are monotremes, or mammals that lay eggs. Echidnas have two types of fur that cover their bodies. They have a short, coarse hair coat that insulates the echidnas from the cold while longer hairs act as spines protecting them from predators. Their sharp, creamy colored spines are composed of keratin, the same material that makes up our fingernails. Consuming ants, termites, grubs, larvae, and worms, the echidna is specially adapted to hunt its prey. It has a pointy snout that can sense electrical signals from insect bodies. Once it detects its prey, the echidna uses its long, sharp claws and short, sturdy limbs to dig into the soil and expose these animals. Now, it's time to talk about one of the strangest birds on the planet, a southern cassowary. Like ostriches and emus, these birds cannot fly. They are some of the world's heaviest birds, 
second only to ostriches in weight. They are the third tallest bird in the world. Cassowaries are found in northeastern Australia and New Guinea, up in the jungle areas. Now, they do make their habitats in tropical forests, grasslands, swamp forests, savannas, and palm scrubs. While cassowaries are extremely shy, they have strong defenses against predators. They use their dagger-like claws to cause severe injury to predators or humans. Cassowaries have five-inch long claws. Southern cassowaries are believed to be the most dangerous birds in the world, and they've even killed people. Now, if you look close, you may be able to see something that's pale green in color. These are the cassowary eggs. They can lay between three and eight eggs at a time. And those moms are going to protect those eggs with everything they have. All right, let's look at another marsupial that is found only in Australia. These are the wombat. Wombats are marsupials. They do have a pouch, but their pouch opens upside down towards their legs to keep the dirt out of the pouch. Now, wombats love to dig. They can move up to three feet of dirt in a single day when building a burrow. Now, their burrows are very large and complex that could be up to a hundred feet long. While wombats look all cute and cuddly, they are not as helpless as they look. They defend their home territories around their burrows and can become aggressive to intruders. There are reports of human injuries from wombat attacks, including puncture wounds from their claws, deep bites, and injuries from being bowled over by charging wombats. Now, one of the really interesting things about wombats, for a kid's perspective, is that their poop is square. They mark their territories by defecating, and it's thought that the shape of their poop keeps it from rolling away. Special bones in their backsides allow them to squeeze and form their feces into cubes. Luckily, humans don't have that ability, or I could see some of y'all leaving it to mark y'all's territory. Now here we have one of the strangest animals in the world, a platypus. Now a platypus not only is venomous, but it's also a member of, of a group called the monotremes. Now, monotremes are mammals that lay eggs. There are only five species of monotremes, the platypus and then the four species of echidnas. So, monotremes are only found in Australia. When you first look at a platypus, it looks like a strange mixture of several different animals. It has the web feet and brown coat of an otter, the flattened tail of a beaver, and the large bill of a duck. Now the platypus's body and tail are covered with dense waterproof fur. This traps a layer of warm, insulating air close to the animal's body, a lot like a penguin. The platypus's legs are attached to the sides of its body rather than underneath. This gives the animal a reptile-like walk. Now, when walking on land, the platypus walks on the knuckles of its front feet to protect the webbing between its toes. 
there is less webbing on its hind feet. A platypus is one of the very few mammals that are venomous. The male platypus has spurs on each ankle that can deliver venom powerful enough to kill small animals such as dogs. While not lethal to humans, the venom can cause excruciating pain. Let's talk about the flying foxes in Australia. There are two species of this type of bat that are native to Australia, the spectacled and the little red flying foxes. Now these bats are vegetarians and mainly eat nectar and fruit. They have the ability to cross-pollinate over great distances and they carry fruit and seeds far away from parent trees. These are the main pollinators of many native Australian trees as they carry pollen on their fur to other flowers. These are some huge bats, up to four feet wingspan. Now, these bats have excellent vision and a great sense of smell. They do not use echolocation like the small micro bats. These bats are very clean animals and constantly groom their fur and wing membranes. You may think that they look ugly, but these bats will not hurt you. They are less dangerous than birds. So just kind of watch from a distance. Two times a day, Lone Pine Sanctuary has a free flight raptor show. This show features birds such as eagles, owls, kites, and falcons. One of the cool things about the raptor show is that these birds fly around their handlers and you can feel their wind from their wings as they swoop down to catch prey that have been set up by these handlers. It is one of the coolest shows I have ever seen. One final thing to do at Lone Pine Sanctuary is to check out their sheepdog show. This show provides insight into Australia's sheep farming history. You get to see their skilled sheepdog handlers and their canine companions herd sheep through various obstacles. The sheepdogs move the sheep through different obstacles, over a bridge, through some gates, and finally into a pen. They show how impressive they are by standing on the backs of the sheep while the sheep are in a pen. Finally, the shearer picks out a sheep and shears the sheep using techniques that are common in Australia. It is definitely a show worth watching. I hope you have enjoyed visiting Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary with me. All these animals are native to Australia. Please enjoy. Look at the animals. They are awesome. This is Mr. Josh. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I will see you later.